let's continue working on a beam with distributed loads applied to it. So, so far for this beam that we were studying with a constant load distribu distributed force of Q applied in the negative Y direction, we found the equivalent nodal forces, which is this vector, minus QL over two, minus QL squared over 12, minus QL over two, QL squared over 12. Now, how do we use this? Next, we have to define effective nodal forces. Effective nodal forces, shown here, F underscore or in subscript EFF, short for effective, is equal to equivalent nodal forces. So equivalent nodal forces with the actual nodal forces that we're looking for, the reactions. Uh, and the external forces that might be applied other than the distributed force applied to the element. And we use this in our general FEM equation, the relationship between the nodal forces and nodal displacements, to find the unknown displacements and unknown forces or unknown effective forces, and then find the actual forces or the nodal forces that we're looking for. So we have the equivalent nodal forces from before. These are our unknowns and some of them might be known. We add the two vectors and we come up with this vector. This portion is the equivalent nodal force vector. And we found that previously here. And that's true for a constant distributed force or load applied to a beam element. These parts, or this portion of the vector, are the nodal forces that we want to solve for. And the summation of these two vectors, as I said, gives us the effective nodal force. So we use that. We know the stiffest matrix of a beam, and we form the displacement vector for a beam with the known or unknown boundary conditions. And then we find the elements of this vector. So everything in here is known, and then everything is in here is known. We can subtract the equivalent nodal force from the effective nodal force and find the forces we're looking for. So these are, let me change the color of the pen to blue. These, this vector is basically that, that we want to solve for. So in our example, we have F one Y and F two Y but M1Z is equal to zero, and M2Z is equal to zero. And if I look back again, M1Z and M2Z are shown there on the second and fourth elements of this vector, which I've put zero here, and zero plus in here, because I don't have them. But F1Y and F2Y are the, are the unknowns of my equation. Let me change the color of the pen to red. So the boundary conditions here, and let me write that this is a constant Q, is that D1Y is zero, but Phi1Z is our unknown. D2Y is zero, and Phi2Z is unknown. So this is known, this is known, this is unknown and this is unknown. I have a system of four equations and four unknowns. I have this unknown and this and the two phi's. And I know the q's and l's as the inputs of my equation. So if I solve for this problem, I can find the f1y and f2y as well as phi1z and phi2z. This is what I will end up with. First, I found the phi1z and phi2z to be equal to this equation. So phi1z is 
minus ql cubed over 24 ei and phi 2 z is ql cubed over 24 ei which i could insert into this equation again here so this portion becomes equal to th this matrix times this vector for which all of the elements are known now if i do that i will end up with this equation this effective nodal forces will be equal to these values 0 minus ql over ql squared over 12 0 ql squared over 12 now F1y, M1z, F2y, M2z, the ones that I'm looking for actually, are equal to the effective nodal forces minus equivalent nodal forces. This is something that we found earlier, and this is something that we found from solving for the problem. And if I subtract this, 0 minus minus QL over 2 gives me QL over 2 for F1y, and minus QL minus ql squared over 12 minus minus ql squared over 12 gives me 0 for m1 z 0 minus minus ql over 2 gives me ql over 2 which is f2 z or f2 y and ql squared over 12 minus ql squared over 12 gives me 0 as I was expecting and the summation of F1y and F2y, and let me write down here, F1y plus F2y is equal to QL, which if I go back to my problem, this is Q multiplied by L would give me a QL at the center of the beam. And so we found how to solve a beam with a distributed load in this lecture.